Ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. You're listening to the Deal Room Podcast. Join us as we bring you the inside scoop on business sales and acquisitions. Get across trends in the area and hear the industry's best recount their real life tips, traps, and experiences. Now, here's your host, Joanna Oki. Hi, it's Joanna Oki here, and welcome back to the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. Now, today we have on the show the very fabulous Mary Tamvacola. Okay, I can't say it, Mary. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Mary, Mary's going to give you her last name. Mary, please save me. Mary, introduce yourself. (laughs) Mary Tamvacologos from any business. Okay, it's really not that hard, is it? I don't know why I, anyway, you say it much better than I have the ability to. Mary from any business. And today, Mary and I are drilling into the market trends at the moment. Market trends are always a hot topic on the Deal Room podcast. So I think you, our listener, are going to really enjoy this discussion with Mary and I. So Mary, over to you. Let's kick into it. Um, Maybe if you can just start off with a little bit of an overview of what any business is. So thanks, Joe. Thanks for having us on. Any business has been around for about six years. We're a business for sale website. So predominantly, we have businesses on uh, business brokers on the website that that uh, list their businesses for sale. We're Australia wide, and we came about when uh, real businesses back six years ago closed down. Our founders were were from real business, so we have created this website based on real business website. So we've got lots of exits. Sorry, what do you mean? Just uh, just to drill into that, what do you mean by real business website? Okay, so about six years ago, real commercial, uh, uh, realestate.com, sorry, um, had a section called realbusinesses.com. Mm. Okay. They closed that down about six years ago. Our co-founders were actually one of the general managers and, and operators in that section. So once that closed down, we did see a space there for opening a, a website that that was only based on selling businesses. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so the basic idea behind it is that um, brokers use the any business website um, as a means of getting their um, their vendors listings out to the general public because people who are looking to buy a business are doing internet searches and so up pops any business with the businesses that you have listed for sale. Is that right? That's right, Joe. That's right. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay. And then, and just to drill into that a little bit more, you have brokers who list on any business, but do you also have vendors directly if they're not using brokers? Is that a thing? Does that happen? Yes, we do. We have private listers. We've just had that uh, launch in the last three months. Mm. So if you're not looking for a broker, you can directly list on the on the website. Do you know what? I didn't, you, the listener, I didn't even see that question. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even. <laughs> So there you go. That's fabulous, Mary. <laughs> okay, so brokers will, will list through your or you know private listings as well. Okay, all right, great. So obviously, and and this is the reason for this discussion. Obviously, you have access to a wide range of information um, in relation to the trends. You know, you see when there's a slowing in the listing of businesses. You see when businesses are being listed and then being pulled down quickly because they're selling like hot cake. So that's why I wanted you on the show, Mary, so that you could share with us some of these amazing insights that you have access to via all of the data that you collect as a byproduct of the Any Business website that you run. So let's start from the beginning then in trends, what are you seeing just as a general perspective? What are you seeing as general perspective right now? Well, what we have seen, Joe, this year compared to last year, the same time last year, we have seen a 30% decrease in business listings. Okay. So that's I- interesting. A 30% decrease. Uh, okay. Yeah. And then, so so that's right now. Mm-hmm. What were you seeing when COVID hit? And and I guess there's always a lag period, isn't there? Because the, the businesses that were listed at the time COVID hit, were obviously, you know, had already been there. But when did you start to see a drop-off and how severe was that 
initially. So we did see a drop off pretty much automatically after uh, COVID hit. We saw people pulling off their businesses. Now, Mm. uh, recently we did a survey from our business brokers just to work out exactly what happened to those businesses because a 30% decrease in businesses is is a huge decrease for us. So what we did find out was people were removing their businesses because of the fear of the value of their businesses dropping. Yeah. because of the closures. They had also a fear of they won't be able to get a job, so they're best to keep their businesses. Mm. And also we did see that some businesses were actually just closed down. And, and I guess um, before we dig into that a bit more, just to ensure I'm clear and our listeners are clear, what's the general size of business or what's what's the range in the the sort of sale value for business on any business? So we have 20000 up to a about 1.8 million, 2 million. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so it. we saw the smaller businesses obviously come off the website pretty quickly. Yeah, right. Okay. And so was there a difference? It, it sounds like you're suggesting there was a difference between smaller businesses versus slightly larger businesses. Yeah. The smaller businesses were impacted more. Were the slightly larger businesses impacted as well? They definitely were. However, we did see that the smaller mental had more of the fear component mm. in them. Obviously, reduced value of their business mm. uh, and not being able to get a job. So, it was best for them to keep their businesses. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting that one of the elements might be that vendors are concerned about not being able to have a job because many of the vendors that we deal with, in, in fact, almost all of the vendors we deal with won't um, go to employment after um, selling a business. In fact, in many instances, they're selling to retire, they're selling to go and, you know, start another business or whatever. So uh, that's that's an interesting component. But we were talking a little bit uh, before about maybe there's different elements of that as well. That's true, Joe. They're looking into the future of the economy. We know right now the economy's down, but in six months' time, they don't know whether they're going to be able to find a business that's going to be viable or employment. Yeah. 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 It's a, so it's just that general concern about what does it look like? I've got my business now that earns me income. That's right. You know, it's that fear of if I'm selling the business. Now, what happens if I can't find the thing that will bring me an income afterwards? Right, got it. Okay. I think you're right about some of these reasons why sellers aren't putting their business on the market at the moment or have pulled them from the market. Certainly, you know, from just from our perspective, dealing with our clients where there have been sellers who have been a bit uncertain about whether or not they sell right now, which has been a lot, or have indeed pulled their business from the market. Market. The number one main reason that we have seen is that fear that they're going to be um, pushed down too much on price because they just feel like it's not the optimum time for them to sell in terms of proving the um, the ongoing strength of the business because they feel like they've been in an and in an impaired state. So that's certainly you know I can. Uh, I can agree that we're certainly seeing that as a reasoning as well. And we're also seeing that there's a lot of um, buyers in the market, however, at the same time that we're seeing a decrease in listings. Is this something that you're experiencing as well at any business? Definitely. We've seen uh, from this time last uh, year, last year to this time this year, we've actually seen a 70% increase in traffic. Over the last two or three months, we've seen continuous growth in traffic um, and a continuous uh, growth in inquiry as well, which goes against obviously less businesses, but more buyers out there and more more buyers looking for for opportunity to buy Mm. a business. Well, that's what we're seeing anecdotally, but it's fascinating that um, the statistics that you're giving me because the statistics are so marked. <laughs> I mean, you've got a 30% decrease in listings, but what did you say? It was a doubling from a year before. Yeah, in... yeah it was 70% increase from last 70% year in traffic. increase. That's huge. Um, and, you know, I guess there's an irony, isn't it? And uh, I think it's um, useful for any uh, prospective sellers to be listening in to understand that right now we're looking at a period of time that ironically you might be thinking it's almost the worst t- 
time to sell them, maybe it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> True. There's the irony in it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And and that's a, that's probably a, a good point you have because a, a good business will sell regardless of the situation. And we see that there's buyers out there looking for those good businesses. So people pulling their businesses off because of believing the reduced rate will impact them or they will get a, a lower value is against what we're seeing in our traffic and our inquiry rate. Okay. So then drilling into that first further, do you, are you able, I'm sure you are able to identify, but let us know if you are and and if you can give us the information on what types of businesses are getting the most traffic at the moment? What size is their industry? So uh, we did see through COVID, um, we did see an influx in inquiry for online businesses, mm. supermarkets, uh, bottle shops. We did all the essential businesses. Uh, for mm. example, we did also see manufacturing businesses mm. um, because obviously being that we're not getting as much manufacturing uh, products in from China, people are now looking at Australian manufacturing businesses. Mm. So we did see a lot of those type of businesses, uh, car washes, service stations, but saying that in the last month, it has gone back into your uh, cafes, car washes, and just the, the mum and dad businesses, franchises. It is swaying back into even even um gyms as well mm, which is mm, great which is mm. great to see and and hotels and motels mm. because we did see that they weren't open so mm. there was less inquiry towards them mm. especially here yeah. in Victoria yes I was going to say particularly where you are in Victoria and have you seen a difference then given we've just raised the you know the topic of well, gyms and cafes in Victoria <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just opening up. Have you seen a difference in between states um, in, in terms of buyer yeah. inquiry, listings? There has been a little bit more traffic across the board in, in the other states, a little bit mm. more inquiry. But there's also a fear component that what happened in Victoria will also happen back into the other states. So yeah. uh, they, they were still quite hesitant, but people were looking. Even in Victoria, through, through lockdown, it was a, a good time for them to get online and look for mm. businesses. A lot of people had lost their jobs and were looking towards the future. Mm. And it's a great time if you lost your job to look at your dream of buying a business. Yeah. And do I mean, that's absolutely the, the case. Are there signs that are able to point you to the um, increase in the buyer job market? Like what, what, what would direct you to that? I mean, you know, the type of business, I guess, you no, know, partly, but I, I guess it's a little bit hard to... <laughs> Yeah. Hard to yeah. tell. Are there any signs in, in in the data that you collect that help? Yeah, we do see that there's more inquiry towards the uh, the business under two hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we do also see the top end businesses selling quite a mm. bit as well. Uh, mm. I think the market that suffered the most was the the middle market, which is probably 250 to the 700 market. Mm. But that's interesting, isn't it? Why do you think that was? Affordability, I think. Mm. The, the, the people that we are looking at the moment are looking for either really good businesses, uh, companies looking for, you know, million-dollar businesses to acquire and people that have lost their jobs just don't have the ability to, to pay more than, say, 200000 for a business. Mm. Okay, interesting. All right. So, um, so that's great. So we've talked about the differences in the states, which is very interesting, the differences in the size of businesses and impact, the differences in the um, the listing numbers versus the buyer numbers and yeah. activity at the moment. One interesting fact that we did find also through the survey was there was a lot of businesses that were shut. They just closed the doors, Joe. And yeah. we did find from business brokers that a lot of those businesses, we had 60% of those businesses were actually saleable businesses. Do you know what? I've seen a bit of that as well and it's intrigued me. Maybe let's talk about that for a moment. I'll just talk about what I've seen and then maybe you can talk about what you've seen, Mary. You know, I've talked to quite a few business owners who have run businesses where they have a concern about how quick the recovery will come and how much effort will be taken to rebuild their business and they just don't have the energy for it. And, you know, then making that decision, do I just walk away or do I come back and do I open it? Do I spend time, money and effort 
making it sale ready because making a business sale ready can take time, money and effort if you if you want to put it in the best possible state for sale or do I just walk away? And I've seen, you know, a lot of the way those decisions have been made based on energy and the connection, I guess, to the business of the business owners behind them. What are you seeing, Mary? I think the fact that everybody had to close, and you're right, they're already closed and the emotions there of do I then, once I open, it's going to take me another six to 12 months to get the business ready for sale again. Do I, you're right, do I have that energy? What's the market going to look like? Is it you know, am I closed for one month, two months or six months? It's not just am I closed for that period of time. It's when I open, yeah. you know, can I get the traffic that I need to make this a viable business? And there's a lot of, you know, thought process that has to go into and obviously weighing, you know, financial considerations, weighing lease terms, weighing commitments, <laughs> yeah. you know, because some businesses have financial commitments that extend for a long period of time, which makes it harder for them to walk away. Yeah. Yes. The the one thing that I haven't got a good grasp on is whether there's a, a marked difference between Sydney, Melbourne and, and the other states in relation to this walk away or this higher likelihood of a walk away rather than sell type decision that these owners are having to make. I suspect there's probably more of this in Melbourne than in Sydney. But, you know, we ultimately, most of our clients have ended up in the sale, but it's just, it's been this decision. It's not been this obvious, let's sell the business move that it usually is. COVID has introduced this other element, which is for some businesses, it's actually a decision whether you prime for sale and then sell or whether you just walk away. But I just wonder if you've seen any differences between the states? As I say, I, I presume in Melbourne, um, in Victoria generally, it's been bigger than the other states. But Definitely. I, I think I agree with you on that one. Uh, we haven't seen a, a specific number, so I can't give you a specific number. But yeah, a lot of obviously the businesses were closed for six months. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. I'm hearing stories just all the time of these poor you know, business owners in Victoria that just have not been able to trade through. And, you know, the stories I'm hearing about are mostly the cafes, the hairdressers, the beauty salons, the, you know, the small mum and dad businesses um, or smaller mum and dad businesses that just have not been able to weather the storm and that probably don't have the ongoing contractual commitments that make that a much bigger decision for them. I think if we go back, I, I think that if the advice I'd give them is to contact a business broker or a, yeah. a lawyer before they look at uh, closing anything to to see whether their business is saleable. We're, we're absolutely giving the same advice, Mary, because when you sit down and have a look at it, the first thing in is that many business owners, interestingly, don't have a really strong initial grasp on where their liabilities lay. You know, they sort of forget about the personal guarantees that may have signed. You know, they forget about some of these obligations that might continue even if they decide to walk away. So it's absolutely imperative that they understand that first. Um, but number two, I, as you say, Mary, I say, like, just go and investigate the potential of sale. Uh, but it does mean, like, the reality is effort will be required to get a business to the position that it's likely to require a bit of effort to get it to a sale-ready uh, position. But if we look at the market now, Joe, we do have more buyers, do yeah, have more traffic. Exactly. And- Don't just assume you're not going yeah. to be able to sell this business, we're saying, right? there's Because here we are, we've got the 70% increase in traffic on your website from these buyers who are hanging out to find the businesses. We've got listings that have decreased by 30% now might actually be the best time to to be definitely <laughs> rather yeah, than exactly. walking away yeah. yeah rather than walk away and get nothing and like you said and have that ongoing commitment of leases and so forth yeah it's definitely worth you know some time to to actually ring up a business broker and get your business valued Mm. And if I come back for a moment to this discussion we're having earlier about the um, the buyer job market, um, which appears to um, have have had a big increase at the moment, I believe there's been a survey recently conducted with 
business brokers. Is that right? Maybe could you talk us through that survey? Yeah, we conducted a survey through the business brokers on our website. And our predominant reason for doing that is just to see where the market was, to see, obviously, we saw a decrease in listings, where the decrease was and the reasons for people not, obviously, removing their businesses, which we talked about some of the reasons. We didn't, we did also see there was some booming industries, such as if you were selling a supermarket or a bottle shop or even a news agency, they were really good businesses to have. Some of the other things that we did see is where where the business brokers thought the market was going to be um, in the next six months. And, and, and what it, was it, that? Where did they think the market was? Oh, they, they thought it was going to be great. Look, look, it's, it's a positive market. With all the initiatives and all the incentives the governments are, are giving, it is great to see that businesses will start increasing their revenue and, and getting back on track. Now, saying that they've been closed for a bit, that's also a good thing because they've, they've now managed to look at their businesses and cut costs where they needed to cut costs and mm-hmm. start again um, in a more profitable way. Well, I, and, and I I completely concur with that. I, I am an optimist at heart, so maybe take what I say with a grain of salt here, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I am really buoyant. I'm really buoyant about um, the market. I think we will see a lot of activity over next year. I think 2021, we'll see a lot of business sale and acquisition activity. We saw in the work coming through to us and the work, um, the matters that we held, that there was there was a real pause for a few months. And then, you know, um, it was a fairly quick increase and we are just absolutely flat out right now. So there is a lot of activity on the table. We deal with a lot of buyers as well. And I I can tell you there is an absolute mass of buyer interest that is coming on to the market. There's things that are slowing buyers down at the moment. Fine access to finance is a bit of a problem at the moment. Finance is slow. Um, The hurdles have been heightened at the moment, but I think There's a lot, I don't think, I know, I absolutely know because we deal with them, we see them all the time at the moment. We are seeing a flood of businesses get acquisition ready. And that's, you you know, I just want to say as an aside, if you're a business who's listening to this because you're interested in market trends and you're looking at acquiring into the future or an individual who's looking to acquire, it's going to be vitally important that you get yourself in an acquisition ready state because I think you're going to see a lot of competition. But we'll probably see, you know, that drop off of a 30% decrease in um, listings change around as well. And I think you'll see rather than it just coming back to the status quo, we'll see a bump in that area as well. What's your, this is my crystal ball, gazing, oh, Mary, this is yeah. my <laughs> gazing. I totally agree with you, Joe. What's your, your yeah. thoughts? I, I totally agree with you. At, at the moment, I think we're we're in a false economy where JobKeeper is prepping up some of the, the businesses so they're not ready to sell. And I think the next three months, they'll flourish with the uh, the JobKeeper and, the, the, mm. then the, and obviously increasing their revenue. And then you'll see them wanting to go to the next step of selling. So I Actually, definitely- and, and I just want to say, because we were talking about the buyer job market mm. before as well, I just want to say that's actually the JobKeeper and other stimulus, I think has been another reason for vendors pulling out as well in the buyer job market. This feeling of business owners who've qualified for JobKeeper which is most of them, if they're looking at selling, um, most of them have qualified for JobKeeper for that initial period at least. They didn't want to sell when they were getting JobKeeper in that sized market because they, because of the financial incentives to stay on, which would be generally lost at sale. There were ways that um, vendors could potentially take advantage of it, but there were certainly many instances when it would see, well, the, the vendor certainly would see those loss. And of course, there are businesses who will continue on to, you know, tranche two and t- tranche three of JobKeeper. So, in those, I think we'll see, like at the at the very end, there a number of those, a l- much larger component of those um, buy a job sized businesses 
coming on the market then as well, don't you think? Yep, totally agree. Totally agree. I think that, yep, we're looking at about March. However, you know, we'll, we do see a quite a big drop in each time the TR changes in JobKeeper. We, we do see probably, we will see another lot of businesses that will go, come onto the market, definitely. Hmm. Well, there you go. I think this is some um, some great uh, forecasting we're doing here, Mary. Gosh, I hope we get it right. <laughs> How embarrassing if we get it wrong if you're listening to this in the future and we've got it totally wrong. Well, it's not our fault. Well, who could have predicted any of this anyway? But I guess this brings me, Mary, to my next question. How is it that you market your business at this time to make sure it sells? The, the first few things you do need to do with your broker is disclose the location. If you're going through a business broker, people are worried about disclosing their location on their business um, and also the price, all their takings of their business. People want to know where businesses are located. If, you, if you're looking at a, a buyer that's ready to buy, they know where they they want to buy and they know at what price they want to buy. So if you're going through a business broker, you really do need to set your marketing plan up to make sure that you you make your location visible. And some of the key data that people need to finalize their purchases, for example, takings and, and so forth, visible in your ad. Because as as we all say, you can't sell a secret. And the majority I of- like it. I didn't know anyone said that. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't sell Quite a secret. <laughs> let's, well, let's tweet that, team. I like it. <laughs> so you can't sell a secret. And the majority of people have been to a business and will buy that business um, because they know the location, they know the clientele and they've been there and they like the food. So the first thing I say to people, part of your marketing plan is make sure that you have the the key components of your business visible in your ad. We do have other components, that, uh, other things that you can use to, to make sure that you get the right buyer. We do on, on our website have social media ads uh, and Google AdWords that people can purchase to make sure that they're visible across not only our website, social media and also Google. Um, so I do believe that you do need a combination of, of uh, of advertising at the moment, marketing advertising, to to make sure that you're in front of those increased buyers of of 70% that are ready to to buy. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. And um, I I mean, get yourself ready now. Now's a great time to sell, notwithstanding some of the reservations you might have. And if you're a buyer, get yourself acquisition ready quickly because you'll be likely to have a competitive market that you're buying in. So um, you need to be able to act quickly. So you need to have all of your ducks lined up in a row. Okay, hold on. I feel like I've got that that metaphor wrong. Your ducks in a row. Ducks in a row. That's it. You need all your ducks in a row. Oh, I love it. Okay. Well, do you have any other parting tips, ideas, insights for us, Mary? So basically, you're looking at buying a business. Come and see us. Um, visit our website. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Where do we find that, Mary? www.anybusiness.com.au. Uh, and as you can see by the title, any business, you're looking for a cafe, restaurant, car, a car wash, motel, we've got them all. So come and visit us if you're looking at buying a business, if you're looking at selling a business. We do have a database of business brokers that can help you. Over a thousand business brokers across the whole of Australia. So please visit us. Or if you're looking at also selling it privately. We, we do cater for that as well. So please give us a buzz, a, a pop onto the website. Our motto is we are your destination for buying and selling businesses. Love it. I love it. That's a great tagline. What is it? We are your destination for buying and selling businesses. I love that, Mary. That's um, that's great stuff. So thank you so much for coming on to the Deal Room podcast today, Mary. I've um, really enjoyed this discussion. It's been great to have you on. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for your time. I look forward to seeing what the market does. And I know, right? Let's see. If we've ticked all of the forecasts off correctly, I think we'll have to um, pop a bottle of champagne together. What do you reckon, Mary? That's and it. That's our- it. Look- <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. A forecasting success. Brilliant, wonderful, Mary. Well, once again, thanks again for coming on the Deal Room podcast. Thank you, Joe. 
Well, that's it for this episode of the Deal Room Podcast. And of course, we're talking to Mary from Any Business all about the trends in small business sales and acquisitions. If you'd like more information about this topic, then head over to our website at thedealroompodcast.com where you'll be able to download a transcript of this episode if you'd love to read it in more detail. There you'll find the details of how to contact Mary at Any Business. And of course, you will also be able to find contact details for contacting our lawyers at Aspect Legal if you or your clients would like to discuss any legal aspects of sales or acquisitions. We work with clients both big and small and have different types of services depending on size and complexity, so don't hesitate to book an appointment if you'd like to find out how we might be able to assist. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. And if you did, make sure you have hit subscribe on that podcast player that you're listening to us on. Thanks again for listening in. You've been listening to Joanna Oki and the Deal Room Podcast, a podcast proudly brought to you by our commercial legal practice, Aspect Legal. See you next time. Have you heard of Aspect Legal's partner program? Our partner program is a free program that's open to brokers, corporate advisors, accountants, and any other advisors to businesses who are dealing with organizations that are leading into a sale or acquisition of businesses or shares. As part of our partner program, we offer free access to our legal hotline, which is a support line to our specialist lawyers. We also provide a pre-free sale legal review to buyers and sellers where we educate them about the process and timelines from a legal perspective. And the third element that forms part of this partner program is a match-up database that we run where effectively we're able to connect up accountants or brokers or corporate advisors with businesses who are looking to either sell or acquire. So if you're a partner of ours, you go straight into that partner database and where we can see opportunities to provide matchups, then we introduce you. And the final element of our partner program is ongoing education in the form of seminars, webinars, and meetups. And that's something new that we're introducing into the partner program in early 2020. So if you're not a partner, then all you need to do to become a partner is just pop us an email at partners at aspectlegal.com au and just simply say in your subject column, I want to become a partner. It's as easy as that to get immediate access to our free legal hotline and all of those other resources. We look forward to having you on board as a partner. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen. that will conclude this evening's entertainment. Thanks for listening to The Deal Room Podcast. To find out more about this episode and other episodes in the series, check out the show notes or head over to our website at thedealroompodcast.com.au.